Good morning, YouTube. That is my CNC machine. I bought that thing from a company in Germany called Stepcraft. It's a kit product. And the reason why this channel has been a little bit quiet the last few months is because I've been busy building it and then learning how to use it and learning how to use CAD and CAM software and basically learning how to machine things so that I can build cool stuff for this channel. Okay. Now this video isn't about that machine. This video is actually going to be about this table that I bought to support the weight of that machine. This machine with the enclosure is about 200 pounds or about 85 or 90 kilos. And so I needed something really sturdy and kind of heavy duty to support the weight of the machine. And it just so happens IKEA has this new product called the Brur. And this is a pretty brilliant frame and it's only 50 bucks. This whole thing cost me 50 bucks. I put an extra support on it to, to make it even more rigid. But as I was building this, it occurred to me, well, IKEA has given you all the bits and pieces that you need to create a plate reverb. You got a super rigid frame. You've got a piece of thin steel as the shelf. And that's like 90% of a plate reverb. And I've always loved the sound of plate reverbs. Ever since I was working in recording studios, I loved the sound of the EMT, but they're just so expensive and big and bulky. And I mean, they're not something you're gonna have in a typical home studio, but something like this with all the electronics can give you a pretty cool sounding plate reverb. It's not as nice as the EMT, but I built this hacky prototype that I'm actually super proud of, and I think it sounds actually really good. So let's run some sounds through it, see what it sounds like, then maybe you'll want to build one for yourself. Okay, so this setup is a little bit complicated because I'm trying to record everything into the recorder uh, while playing back sound from the computer through the plate, but the bits and pieces that you need to know about are as follows. We've got output three from the audio interface coming out and going through this amp that I built. That's the battery for the amp. And it's coming out to this transducer, okay? And this thing is just resting on the surface of this plate. And there's two pickups, one on each side. And these are being routed back into the audio interface through the instrument inputs. This is far from ideal, but this is what I have for the prototype right now. And if you tap on the plate, you already hear some of that. It's picking up the sound of the plate. And if you tap closer to this side, you hear it on one ear more than the other. So left ear and right ear. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is go to my computer here, and I've got Addictive Drums 2 loaded up. I used to work at Excellent Audio. Shout out to my friends there. Okay. Now, in this case, I don't want to hear the room. I just want to hear the plate. So, what I'm going to do is turn the overheads, reverb, and bus down, and turn the FX off. So now we have a very dry drum sound, okay? And if you pan over here to the mixer and cue bass, you'll see that, you'll see that here's our channel. It's going out to the master output and that's what you can hear. And here is the send. That's the one that's going to channel three, which is going to that amp. And right now it's turned off. So let's go ahead and turn it on and turn it up. You should be able to hear more and more of that that plate sound. All right, so you can dial it in this way. Turn it up, turn it down. Now, what's interesting is this plate is active here. So if I have if I have the speakers turned up super loud some of that would get picked up on the plate. Or if I tap on this, 
it gets picked up by the plate. And that's not such a good thing, but there are some interesting possibilities that are opened up when you have a work situation like this, where the plate is actually right in front of you, and that if you want to damp the sound of the plate, let's say it's too reverberant and you want to cut down on the, the reverb time a little bit, you can literally damp down the plate. You can take a scarf and just put it on there. Did you hear the sound of the room change suddenly? Check this out. It's a nice reverberant room. Suddenly it's a much tighter room. If I put some pressure on this, I can make the room even tighter. Or take this away and put, say, a heavy box like this. And if I put some pressure on it again and change the, the timbral qualities of this reverb. So this is pretty fun. It's, it's very hands-on reverb. All right, so you don't have to use this thing on drums. I've got Omnisphere open here. I'm just going to play through some patches of synthy arpeggiated sounds. And, uh, and then we'll try running it through the plate reverb here. Here's the sound dry. Bring it some reverb. Sometimes you can kill the dry sound and just leave only the reverb. That can be kind of interesting too. Bring the dry sound back. Let's pick something else here. Kind of a cool sound. Let's give it some reverb. Dry sound with plate reverb. Let's hear only the plate now. And here's the dry sound again. What about this? These synthetic sounds end up sounding really cool with some reverb on them because they sound like they're in a room. I'm going to put my hand on the plate here. Take my hand off the plate. Did you hear the difference? Let's do one more. Okay, nice wavetable sound. Reminds me of the Waldorf sounds. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's talk about the electronics that you're gonna need to do this project. We have an amp here. I bought this ages ago. I think it was 10 or $15. It was a kid project, and I'm gonna show you a video of how I built it. What you need is a low wattage amp. Anything between one and five watts. You can find these, they're a dime a dozen, and any electronics hobby shop should have something like this. This one I think is about five watts in a stereo, but you only need one channel because you have one transducer. And it's a pretty straightforward build. They all use more or less the same parts and 
I would not recommend anything over five watts. Two to three watts is probably better because these transducers, the ones that look like this, these are only designed to handle two to three watts, sometimes five watts max. So you don't wanna overdrive this and burn it out, okay? So that's the amp and these are transducers. So this is basically a speaker. It's everything other than the cone. If you, if you take the, the lid off, it actually looks like the back of a speaker. Normally there'd be a cone right here, uh, moving and pushing the air forward. But instead of having that, there's usually some kind of plate. This is a quite a large one, but transducers can come in different shapes and sizes. Here's an example of a small one. So this part amplifies the sound and pushes it into the plate. And then here we've got a bunch of different piezo pickups. These are piezo pickups and they cost practically nothing. These are maybe, maybe a dollar a piece, maybe two bucks a piece. And they come in different shapes and sizes. I basically, when I was building this prototype, I just grabbed a box containing some old parts and I happen to have these. I wanna get more scientific about this and test different types and make a recommendation on what size and shape of piezo one needs, but these ones sounded pretty okay. So you can find these at any kind of, you know, good hobby shop or electronics shop. And the last bit of this puzzle is cabling. You need basically a cable like this. This is a sacrificial cable. I'm going to cut it with clippers and that is pretty much the setup for this. So you'll have signal coming through the amp into the transducer and then getting picked up by the piezos and going through the cable back into your audio interface. Let's talk about the hardware. These are the legs for the IKEA table. And as you can see, they're quite long. These are tall legs. We don't need nearly this much length. So if you'll see there are these little indentations, little mounting holes here, here along the legs. And you only need two of them. So what I did, since I wanted a low profile sort of coffee table look, I only needed two of these. And so I marked out 30 centimeters. Mark and then use a square. So now I got a nice clean line. Get your trusty hacksaw and cut this line. So after quite a lot of sawing, we have these cut down pieces. Now these edges are gonna be super sharp. So take a piece of sandpaper or better yet, a Dremel tool and sand it down. And there you go, frame. What we're gonna do is add the top so we add the top here, and if you see right there in the corner of the frame, we've got another top, because remember, we bought two shelves. The second shelf, that one, is going to be the one that's actually going to be resonating, okay? Now, we can't just plop that on this surface. If we plop that on there, the two plates would be touching, and that plate wouldn't resonate very well. What you want is to suspend that plate on top of this one, with as minimal contact as you possibly can. These are four knobs and they have a nice radius top. And what I'm gonna do is put them on the corners just for these to act as a spacer and to minimize the contact between this and that plate over there. Okay, so four spacers and now we're gonna put the top on top of these spacers. And there we go. So if you take a closer look at this, you'll see that the plates are not actually touching. There's no contact except for those four little knob caps. And what you need to do is, if you're looking at the edge here, make sure that the plate is not touching the side legs. Okay, so there's a little gap here and here. And the point of all of this is to minimize the amount of contact that the plate has with anything so that it resonates well, okay? Here is the transducer, which I'm going to pop down on there. And we're going to take the adhesive backing off of the piezo pickups and plug them into the audio interface. Finally, we're going to hook up the amp to that transducer and we are done. And so there you have it, folks, the IKEA plate reverb hack. 
This has been actually a really fun project. It has sounded much better than I thought it would. I wasn't sure if this was even going to make it to the YouTube channel or if it was just going to be a prototype that I put aside, but I'm really happy with the results. I think it works really well. I'm curious to see how I can iterate and improve things. There are a few problems that I'd like to solve. For example, the, the piezo pickups do pick up a lot of ground hum and that's a bit of a dirty secret. I've had to filter some of that out in Final Cut. And the impedances for these pickups are not well matched to the audio interface. It would be nice to have some sort of preamp device that matches that perfectly so that you don't lose any signal that way. I'd like to do some more research on this transducer. Uh, there might be smaller or larger options that sound better than this one. And I'm sure there will be other things that come up as I, as I do more prototyping. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Is this something you might want to build yourself? Is this fun? Is this interesting? Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, leave those down there as well. And I will get to them in a future version of this project. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this project, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos and tell your friends. You know, let, let other people know so we can grow this thing together. And once again, thank you, and I will see you in the next one.